Hi all, welcome back. So it's hardly 10 days now for a ninth FA and uh, sixth JE, which is going to be happen on uh, 3rd of September. So hope uh, the topics uh, you have gone through. And uh, in today's uh, class, we'll be seeing few questions which are important uh, from the topic I mean, from the unit one, that is Indian food laws and uh, standards and international uh, food laws and standards. So uh, if you see the pattern and uh, the difficulty level, there will be 200 questions and uh, the cutoff is 40 percentage. That means you need to score 80 out of 200. But uh, in the last years, uh, 10 to 15 percentage only people will be uh, get qualified for the uh, examination. So here, uh, what I'll suggest you is like from this itself, you'll get an understanding that uh, level of exam will be like uh, moderate to difficult. So I'll suggest you to uh, make sure you are attempting a minimum of 140 to 150 questions so that you will be in safer side and uh, you can expect a good rank. Uh, after the result. So uh, today we'll be seeing some questions and from that you will get an understanding like from which old parts questions uh, will be coming and what is the level of difficulty. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first question, it's about according to FSSA, compensation to consumer in case of injury to con uh, customer other than death and grievous injury shall not exceed. So this is, uh, as you all know, this is the question is from FSS Act. And this is talking about a offense or a penalty, which is coming from sections 50 to 65. So it's very important. You can expect a question from here uh like a kind of uh, offense or penalty uh a fine how much it is coming or for how much time the uh, i mean the penalties are coming so this is very important so in this question uh if you see the options it is one lakh two lakh three lakh and four lakh so here the section talking about this is 59 so it is about uh, selling unsafe food so here the persons uh uh, covered under this offense will be the manufacturer, seller, storage uh, person, distributor, and importer. And here, this is very important. If the unsafe food is not causing any injury, then the uh, imprisonment will be six months and the fine will be one lakh rupees. So here, uh, both are there, imprisonment plus fine. And if it is a non-grievous injury, this means the injury is not serious. Then uh, there will be a one year of imprisonment and uh, three lakh rupees of fine. And in our question, it is same. It is other than death and grievous injury. So it is not talking directly about uh, non-grievous injury, but indirectly the answer will be this only. So the ans correct answer will be one uh, year and three lakh rupees. And here uh, uh, two more options are there. If it is causing grievous injury, then the fine will be six years. Uh, I mean, imprisonment and five lakh rupees fine. And if in case of death, it is seven years to lifetime and the fine will be 10 lakh rupees. So this kind of questions you can expect. Uh, and uh, some other sections, this is also like very important. Uh, everything you need to remember, but I have just quoted some two more important sections. It is 53, that is misleading advertisement. We have seen this very clearly, what is happening here and uh, uh, what are the examples and uh, in case of a false description or if it is a telling a natural quality or substance in a misleading way, the publisher or person involved in publishing of the particular advertisement will be getting a fine of 10 lakh rupees. And in this case, uh, imprisonment is not mentioned. And in section 51, this is also very important. It is talking about substandard food and uh, the manufacturer, seller, storage, distributor, importer, all will be liable for this offense as well and the fine is 5 lakh rupees. So uh, you just get an idea uh, like how much is the fine and what is the imprisonment, where is the, in which all sections imprisonment is coming. 
So uh, moving on, second question, uh, which of the following is not a part of risk analysis? So the options given are risk assessment, risk communication, risk management and risk prevention. So this is also very clearly given in section three. That is section three is definition part. Uh, there you can see. Uh, so uh, if you see there are like risk assessment, risk communication, risk management. These three are the part of risk analysis. So the old one out will be risk prevention. And uh, in risk assessment, you know, it is the process of evaluating the potential risk and their associated likelihood of happening and the severity. So in that, this particular four steps are coming. Hazard identification, hazard characterization, exposure assessment and risk characterization. So this is very important. And in risk communication, it is the process of exchange of information about risk between various stakeholders, including the public, authorities and experts. Sometimes you can, uh, we will get a question, like you will get the definition and uh, it will be like uh, the options will be giving like risk communication, assessment, management. So out of that, you need to choose the right one. And in risk management, you know, it is the process of identifying, evaluating and implementing measures to mitigate or control a risk. So it is like three are like coming in a stepwise only risk assessment will be happening first. Then the exchange of information to all the stakeholders are in risk management. If the risk has been taken, like there is a chance of risk, then the process will be starting for identifying, evaluating the measures to control the particular risk. Moving on, BIS works under. So this is also this is coming under uh, uh, other national bodies uh, in that particular section. It will be coming. So here the four ministries are given. So if you see here, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is there. So that is the Ministry of uh, FSSI and Ministry of Commerce is there. So it is you know it is talking. It is the ministry which is coming under. Uh, uh, sorry, LM will be coming under the Ministry of uh, Commerce. And uh, Department of Food Processing, Industry, MOFPI. So this is pre uh, previously uh, FSSA was a part of this at the time of like not FSSA at the time of FSS Act implementation. FSSA uh, MOFPI was the uh, ministry behind that, but later it went to uh, uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So here the correct answer will be Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. The uh, option one. So BIS is the National Standard Body of India established under BIS Act for the harmonious development of activities of standardization, marking and quality certification of goods. So it is working under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, uh, food and public distribution of the uh, government of India. So BIS previously called as ISI. So this is also an important term that is previously called as ISI. It is the National Standard Body which was started at the year of 1947. And BIS, the uh, act came in uh, 26th of November 1986, very, very important. And the act came into existence or the act came into force on 1st of April 1987. And it operates uh, product certification schemes by which it grants licenses to manufacturers covering practically every industrial discipline. So moving on to the next question, maximum permissible limit for aflatoxin M1 in milk as per the provision of FSS CTR regulation 2011. So it is directly from a question FSS CTR, CTR stands for contaminants, toxins and uh, residues regulation which came in 2011. So the options given here are 0.5 uh, ppm, uh, uh, it is PPB, uh, 30 PPB and 50 and 20 PPB. So the correct uh, answer is here is 0 0.5 uh, uh, MCG per kg or it is nothing but PPB. So here it is, uh, you can see the, uh, it is talking about aflatoxin M1. So it is a microtoxin, microtoxin which is found in milk when dairy cows consume feed which is contaminated with aflatoxin B1. So I have given a short note also here in that chapter one, you will be seeing general definitions and uh, uh, requirements, etc. In chapter two, you will be seeing maximum limits of contaminants, toxins and residues. And in 2.1, it is very important metal contaminants in that you will be seeing eight different uh, metal contaminants. This is very important. Lead, copper, arsenic, zinc, cadmium, etc. So this eight you need to uh, by heart. And in section, I mean, uh, regulation 2.2, 
it is talking about crop contaminants and nots nots stands for naturally occurring toxic substances so here uh, the maximum limit given in uh, mcg per kg and the uh, crop contaminants mentioned here are aflatoxin aflatoxin m pactulin ocratoxin a so uh, these four are mentioned here and the uh, another list of contaminants is also there including agaric acid hydrocyanic acid hyperisin and safrole so this uh, eight only are coming under this so make sure you know you study the maximum limit for each of this moving into the next question awareness material have been created under snf snf stands for safe and nutritious food initiative so which of the following awareness book is for school children so this four books this is very important so i'll, I'll we'll go to the answer section so here first is yellow book yellow book is uh, it is a, a guide to make sure that safe and nutritious food is getting in school so this you need to remember yellow book is for school so the yellow book is an interactive and illustrative easy to understand guide which becomes an important tool for parents teachers and students so this can also uh, can use as a classroom narrative lecture as well as a laboratory practice practical uh, practical book or for exercises and in orange book it is safe and nutritious food snf at workplace so this is the important thing orange book is directly for workplace so it is a uh, the, there is a campaign national wide campaign for uh, uh, to help people eat safe and eat right while at work so this initiative educate people on safe and healthy diets and in pink book it is snf at home so this is important again so this book has been developed specially for kitchens in india homes so that the food prepared is safe hygienic and nutritious the book has nine sections namely buying food storing food preparing and cooking food serving food etc then next is dart that is uh, detect adulteration with rapid test this is a common uh, quick test compilation for detection of food adulterants in household level so there are like more than 50 tests uh, that uh, people uh, can perform in the household level itself with the uh, help of water and simple solutions like tincture of iodine etc etc so many i um, mean Food products are coming under this. You can go to the uh, book also, which is available in FSSI website. Uh, so get an idea like what all are coming under that. So this is the four books talking about. So here the question was about uh, school. So the uh, correct answer will be here. Option A, yellow book. Coming into next question for manufacturing of package drinking water. Basic requirement for the FBOs to obtain FSSI license includes. Uh, so the question it is very clear here for package drinking water other than FSSA license what is uh, mandatory so the correct answer here will be uh, BIS so move, uh, coming into the uh, description of this uh, BIS sets the quality standards for package drinking water under IS 14543 so this is the IS standard uh, and compliance with these standards is essential for ensuring the safety and quality of the product. So here the thing is like if you go into that uh, particular portal called Foscos for uh, uh, licensing. So when you are applying for general manufacturing under package drinking water or uh, mineral water. So there will be a requirement of uh, BIS certificate to be uploaded. So that is also a mandatory thing. Uh, so here other options agmark and fpo are not directly connected with package drinking water they are nothing but uh, uh, related with agricultural products and processed foods etc so uh, here again i have given for uh, uh, in fss prohibition and restriction on sales it is very clearly mentioned that uh, mandatory certification under bis act is given for certain products so this is very important you need to go through this and remember this Infant formula, BIA certification is mandatory. Milk, cereal based weaning food, a processed cereal based weaning food, follow up formula. So, these four you can remember as coming under weaning food. And here it is uh, packaged drinking water and mineral water. We have seen milk powder, skim milk powder, partly skim milk powder, and condensed milk, partly uh, skimmed and skip, uh, skimmed condensed milk. So, here it is milk and 
milk powder also coming under this. So this is like mandatory certification of BIS he is required for this. Next question, Food Authority has commissioned 21 scientific panels which comprises dash vertical and horizontal panels. This we have seen many times. So again, we'll be seeing here the answer will be 11 vertical and 10 horizontal panels. So we have seen that vertical panels and horizontal panels means what? So uh, horizontal panels as we have seen it is uh, that uh, number of horizontal panels are 10. So this is like general standards. This is this will be uh, applicable for all the commodities. So the panels will be like food additives, pesticide residues, antibiotic residues, GM foods, biological hazards, contaminants in the food chain, etc., labeling, etc. So you will get an understanding that here all of this um, and standards are like common for each uh, for the, all the food products. So it is not commodity specific. That's why it is horizontal. And in vertical panels, it is like commodity uh, specific. So the standards are uh, specific for each commodity. That's why uh, it, it is like it is not common for uh, each uh, like horizontal. So here the number of panels are 11. So that include functional food, nutra, fish and fish products, cereals, pulses, legume, FNV, uh, meat and meat products, uh, milk and milk products, oils and fats, sweets, confectionery, water and beverages, spices and herbs, alcoholic beverages, etc. So remember that we have uh, 10 horizontal panels and 11 vertical panels under uh, FSSA. Next is uh, which of the fol uh, following is a functional area in which SPS deals. So SPS, you know, it is uh, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, measures uh, agreement, which is an initiative taken by WTO. So under this, you know, the option, see the option here, it is contaminants, they are talking about poisonous substances, residues of veterinary drugs, etc. So the correct uh, answer will be all of the above. It's coming into the detailed description here, SPS uh, uh, deals with the measures to protect human and animal health from risk arising from additives, contaminants, toxins, or disease causing organisms in food, beverages, and feedstuffs. So uh, SPS has came at the time of May 1998, and uh, uh, which came into force with the establishment of WTO and the date of implementation of WTO is very important, 1st of Jan 1995, and WTO uh, has uh, came uh, instead of uh, GATT agreement. So, uh, that is nothing but general agreements on tariff and trade. It came on 1948. So this important, these all are the important dates, and you need to remember like which all organization are connected with what and what are, are the previous establishments before the date. And the agreement on the application of SPS sets out the basic rule for food safety and animal and plant health standards. So in that also there are like the three sisters are coming. That is. Uh, SPS, uh, so it uh, it is coming as like uh, IPPC, OIE, and Codex. So here uh, it is also coming under WTO agreements. So Codex is for food and OIE is for uh, animal health and IPPC is for plant protection. And here I will be the options will be uh, all of the above because uh, all these are connected with SPS agreements. Next is which is the following is a source of thickening agent. So here a question came uh, from additive part. So this is also very important. You need to remember the functional classes and what all are the examples coming under this. So here you have exam uh, answers options as lecithin, guargum, GMS and sodium nitrate. So you know here uh, lecithin is uh, very uh, it's very common and it's very famous emulsifier. Uh, it is majorly made from soya and GMS. It is uh, glycerol monosterate. It is also a emulsifier or thickener, which is uh, used in bakery products now majorly. And sodium nitride, you know, it is like a preservative used in meat products. So the correct option will be in goar gum, which is used as a source of thickening agent. So it is commonly used in a food industry. Uh, it's natural polysaccharide derived from the seeds of guar plant, and it is used to increase the viscosity and the texture of food products. 
so it is used majorly in uh, sauces dressing soups ice cream and other processed foods it helps the improve stability and mouth feel of this products so this kind of uh, i mean uh, examples you need to remember like which all categories are there uh, like the flavors and sweet artificial sweeteners uh, thickening agents emulsifiers this and all like a description you will be knowing and the very common examples uh, you need to remember moving on to the next question analysis report format shall be followed by the food analyst under the fssr 2011 uh, so here they are talking about the forms 7a 8 5b and 6 is there so here you need to remember this anyway it is 7a is talk, uh, talking about uh, the report format which will be uh, sending by food analyst uh, uh, under the particular section so here the process and all you know very clearly when uh, f uh, if i mean fso will be taking a sample from the fbo so he'll be giving the form 5 then the, and the 7 like there will be like the next sampling will be there then will be uh, the tests will be happening enable test uh, uh, labs test will be happening and the final report will be sending by food analyst to uh, do uh, two copies. So these all timeline and uh, number of samples, everything we have uh, seen very clearly in laboratory sampling as well as in uh, section 47 of FSS Act. So I'm not going much into that. So here I have given uh, some uh, important forms which you need to by heart. This all are like very important. So here the it is coming from uh, form two onwards. Form two as uh, says a memo. This is also will be giving by FSO. Then form three form of order of uh, Caesar uh, and form four is form of surety bond. Form five A is form of notice to the FBO. Uh, form five B form of notice to the uh, no, given to uh, form of notice to be given by purchaser. It is like purchaser have the authority to analyze uh, food under section. 40 so here it is coming uh, form b 5b and 6 it is memorandum of food analyst 7 it is report of uh, food analyst and it is like 7 8 as you need to remember in that way directly and form 8 it is form of appeal before do and uh, it will be uh, coming uh, before the uh, do place and form 9 is about form of nomination. So this is uh, not directly related with, uh, I mean, uh, sampling methods or process. It is uh, related with the company. Uh, it is like a, there will be like a, a direct um, director will be there. Then there will be many plans. And also uh, there will be each location will be having a particular officer and the director will be nominating one. Uh, for that each location so that form which will be important in licensing uh, that is called form 9 that is a form of nomination and that is nomination of a person by a company or a director in place form 10 it is form of appeal before food safety appellate uh, tribunal so these all are uh, very important and form 1 and form 2 this is uh, uh, different this is like uh, terms of uh, I mean, officers, form of oath of office for chairperson and members of FSSA, form two, form of oath of secretary for the chairperson and members of FSSA. So this is uh, not directly related with uh, this sampling or uh, other things. So you, this up to this form uh, 10, you need to remember. Next question, it is talking about a percentage of uh, milk fat, milk solids, not fat, contents for raw and pasteurized mixed milk in India are. So here it is very clear it is they are talking about percentage of milk fat and uh, SNF milk solids not fat it is SNF so it is standards of milk which is given under uh, chapter uh, 2.1 of FSS food product standards and food additive 2011 it is talking about dairy products and uh, analogs so I told you at the uh, lecture also that is very important. So here if you see it is talking about raw and pasteurized mixed milk. So the uh, and thing here it is simple. It is talking about mixed milk, but they have given in a different term. So it is mixed milk only. So the correct option coming will be 4.5 uh, 
percent is milk fat and 8.5 percent is uh, SNF. So this is the very important table. You need to remember each one of this. So buffalo milk it is six and uh, SNF it is nine. Cow milk 3.2, 8.3, goat or sheep milk 3.39, camel milk 2, 6, mixed milk 4.5, 8.5, standardized milk 4.5, 8.5, tone milk 3, 8.5, double tone milk 1.39. So this is a came one from 1.5 towards 1.3. Skim milk not more than 0 0.5 and 8.7, full cream milk 6 and 9. It's very important. You need to buy heart. This a whole table. As per FSSR, the nutritional information per 100 gram or 100 ml or per serving of the product given on the label shall not contain the following. So this is coming under FSS labeling and display regulation 2020. So in that it is very clear it is in a pre-packaged food commodity in a particular label. What all are the mandatory requirements? So there is like a nutritional information table will be coming in that it is uh, you will be seeing a per serve uh, wow, how much is the I mean uh, quantity of food which the company is suggesting and that will be like per serve. Then number of servings will be there. Say you are recommending uh, 20 gram uh, of a biscuit pack as there and you are suggesting 20 gram then there will be number of servings will be five right this also will be there beside the na table and in that you can see here uh, one column will be standing for nutrients there will be seeing energy protein fat etc then there will be mandatory requirement of nutritional information per 100 gram or 100 ml or per serving of the product so that you will be seeing and again another mandatory requirement percentage rda per serving that is also mandatory requirement so uh, it is like uh, how much percentage rda is uh, getting satisf uh, getting the requirement is getting fulfilled in a one serving so that is the meaning of this so these all will be coming under the na table so this is like na table is mandatory but it is exempted for few food commodities that also you need to remember in it is given in the lnd so here uh, the question is not about this the question is directly about uh, an na panel like uh, out of this uh, which is mandatory or the question is like odd one out which is not uh, which uh, which one is not in there in the particular na table the first option is energy value in kilocalorie that i have already told it will be coming under this nutrients uh, so yeah. Next is amount of protein, carbohydrate, fat in gram or ml that is also coming under this. Okay. Then amount of other nutrient for which allergic potential is declared. And option D, amount of other nutrient for which health claim must be made. So it is like it is not a compulsory one, but uh, if you are telling my product is calcium rich, uh, or I am telling my product is uh, iron rich. So if you see some prepackaged commodities some noodles and all it is written like that iron rich it may or may not be getting fortified but uh, if you are writing in particular way and health claim has been made then that also should be there in the particular uh, na table so this is also a mandatory one and the old one out will be this uh, so the option will be c amount of other nutrient for which allergic potential is declared uh, so in the uh, level there should be uh, that allergen should be declared that is uh, as per fssai there are like eight allergens so this is very important which all are that cereals containing gluten this will be including wheat oats barley etc then crustaceans and uh, products egg and egg products fish and fish products peanut soybean and its products which will be coming as a common category uh, so it is here it is three nuts and nut products it is coming under a common category it is nuts so here it is so peanuts and soya and its products so you can say so yeah will be coming milk and milk products and sulfate in concentration of 10 mg per kg or more it is if the sulfate concentration is more than 10 ppm that is also considered as an allergen so these all eight are the 
potential allergens and if any of this are particularly present in the particular product then that should uh, be written in the uh, label like contains sulfate or contains nuts contains uh, wheat oats barley etc so uh, that that should be there but the uh, amount of that particular allergen causing nutrient is not mandatory and uh, no one will be writing that also so that is the whole idea behind this moving on as per food fortification regulation which statement is incorrect fortified processed foods should provide 15 to 30 percent of the rda of micronutrients form of iron used for fortification should be heme iron only micronutrients are used for the purpose of food fortification hfss food arts are excluded from fortified processed category so here it is again it is coming from a uh, another regulation it is fss uh, fortify, fortified fortification of foods regulation so again it is another one so this also we have seen in a very detailed manner so in the general description if you see this statement is there in a very clear manner that is if uh, any product is fortified with a micronutrient then it should provide 15 to 30 percentage of rda so that means if you are giving a calcium or iron uh, or vitamin b or something like that in a, as a micronutrient then uh, 15 to 30 percentage of rda should be uh, meet or the necessary requirement is this much only micronutrients are used for the purpose of food fortification that is very clear micronutrients including vitamins minerals etc are using hfss are excluded because it is already there are like a friend of pack nutrition labeling and all etc is coming and these all are considered as like negative factors and this kind of products uh, uh, will not be considered as a healthy option so in that uh, fortification is uh, fortification is not allowed so this is like excluded and that is also very clearly mentioned in the general guidelines and this rest option is option is the form of iron used for fortification should be heme iron this is the wrong option normally for fortification iron used will be non heme iron so if you see for uh, uh, rice and wheat flour, atta, wheat flour, atta, maida, etc. Uh, iron fortification uh, has been taken place. And if you see the nutrients, the iron forms or salts which it can use for fortification is very clearly mentioned. It is ferrous citrate, or ferrous lactate, or ferrous sulfate, or ferric pyrophosphate, or electrolytic iron, or ferrous fumarate, or ferrous basically isn't it if you see any of this particular three or if any else is coming this nutrients are specified then this sodium iron of edta uh, that is also present and the level of fortification is this much 28 to 42.5 and non-heme iron on the other hand it is derived, derived from plant-based sources and is the form of iron usually added to fortified foods to address and deficiency and improve nutritional uh content so that is the thing so here the option uh, wrong option is b uh, or used uh, iron uh, won't be uh, like this heme iron won't be using in fortification so that's uh, all about the part one we'll be seeing some few other questions in uh, part two as well so this is the kind of uh, question uh, uh, model kind of questions you can uh, expect and uh, keep on reading, uh, keep on studying. Uh, all the very best for the uh, examination. Thank you.